I think the 9th of January was the uh, first meeting of the newly reconstituted outreach and social justice team, wasn't it, Lorraine? Yes. And uh, the outreach and social justice team met in the upper room, and it was uh, quite a wonderful uh, meeting. Now, at this meeting, interested people reviewed the status of outreach and social justice initiatives in which Trinity is already engaged, has been engaged, or are resting on our horizon. A variety of community support initiatives, food security and suppers, indigenous reconciliation, a firm which includes lesbian, bi, gay, transgender, and queer justice and inclusion, gender equity, and environmental stewardship. Now, there was and always will be a special energy associated with outreach and social justice. Now, this energy is present whenever people or groups imagine or engage in something new. An enterprise that affects the status quo or promises change. Now there's a buzz in the stewardship team too and in council as Bob Swan, Chuck Kemp, and team leads race toward looming deadlines to offer the first generation of Trinity's narrative budget. Now, we will continue to recognize a budget in a line item form, and we're used to that, but we will also receive the story of Trinity woven into another form of presentation and it will affect the way we see business. Members of spiritual leadership continue to explore that space in our worship that rests between familiar and fresh. The spiritual leadership team will continue to explore how do we fulfill our discipleship mandate how do we best equip the called for ministry? Christian community is exploring new ways to bring the community into pastoral care. If some of the people we serve have limited mobility, how do we increase the mobility of the community? If some of the people for whom we have a mandate to care cannot come, how do we as a community go? Now this is all a wonderful buzz. Now, the story of what has become the Rideau Environmental Action League continues to generate a buzz. It generates a buzz in its telling and rightly stands as a point of pride for Trinity United Church. It also stands as a lesson for those who seek to advance something new. Now I will listen out of this year for a correction from Peter and Brenda in the choir, but I will give what I believe were the highlights of the genesis of real in a distilled form and you can correct me if I'm wrong. And I'm making some assumptions that you can correct me if I'm wrong. Now more than 30 years ago, was it 30 or 35? It was a long time ago. A long, long time ago in a congregation close to us this morning. More than 30 years ago, a movement began here at Trinity 
which was at that time revolutionary. For our people and community today, that revolutionary thing is the expected thing now. Now, what was it like before Trinity's effort became the Rideau Environmental Action League? What was it like before blue bins and reduce, reuse, recycle were commonplace? What was it like when not everyone accepted without question that recycling and environmental stewardship is are good and important. What was it like when there was one champion? What was it like when there were a few advocates? What was it like when there was an identifiable, uh, identifiable group of workers addressing one issue? What was it like when space in an already small parking lot was taken up by a sorting bin? What was it like when the materials being sorted were at that time still considered garbage? What was it like when Trinity first was first associated with a group that was pressuring the municipality for change? The story of what has become the Rideau Environmental Action League continues to generate buzz in its telling and in its retelling and rightly stands as a point of pride for Trinity United Church. No doubt, however, 30 years ago or more than 30 years ago, that buzz went both ways. Changing the status quo always does. No matter how wonderful that change will be remembered in 30 years, in its day, the buzz goes both ways. You encounter pro excitement and you encounter opposition. But entering into that space where the buzz goes both ways is what leadership is called to do. Leaders and leadership gather the willing. Leaders and leadership encourage the uncertain. Leaders and leadership challenge the opposed. And leaders and leadership confront the oppressor. In the Hebrew scripture, we read, we read, you were asking for a prophet the day you were gathered at Mount Sinai. Moses, they have said the right thing. The story of the ex Exodus is one of a people being set free and learning what that freedom means. It's a story of a people discovering who they are. And despite missteps that make wonderful sermons about fickleness of human nature and faith, the children of Israel want to be free. The children of Israel want to be their own people, and the children of Israel want to do it right. Moses had gathered the willing. God will raise up a prophet, a leader, to assist them. 
in the Hebrew scripture this morning, we see that leadership gathers the willing. Paul wrote, In your letter, you asked me about food offered to idols. Many people have grown up with the belief that idols have life in them. So when they eat meat offered to idols, they are bothered by a weak conscience. But food doesn't bring us any closer to God. We are no worse off if we don't eat, and we are no better off if we do. But don't cause problems for people with a weak conscience. Just because you have the right to eat anything. So, it doesn't bother you to eat in the temple of an idol. But suppose a person with a weak conscience sees you and decides to eat food that has been offered to idols. Then what you know has destroyed someone. You sin by hurting a follower with a weak conscience. So if I hurt one of the Lord's followers by what I eat, I will never eat meat as long as I live. Now Paul writes to the Corinthian church in a changing time and in a mixed context. Because the context is mixed, there is uncertainty and change. People who want to do the right thing have to learn what the right thing is. Now, the eating of food sacrificed to idols was an excellent example of how Christians exercise sensitivity. Now, in the context of animal sacrifice, no matter the religion, whether it was in the temple or in the pagan temples, after the sacrifice, the animal becomes meat that can be sold in the marketplace. So this religious act becomes, in effect, a fundraiser for the temple. So if you have no relationship to or regard for the traditions of the Romans, if you don't care where the meat was, you buy it and eat it. But in a mixed community, where there were people for whom this sacrificed meat had meaning, it was tainted by a religious act and was funding a pagan community. So for some, you could not eat meat that was bought in the market and was sacrificed in a pagan temple. So the Corinthian church is uncertain. They write Paul. What do we do? Paul's response in the scripture reading this morning clarifies concerns. Leadership encourages the uncertain. Jesus went into the Jewish meeting place or synagogue and started teaching. Everyone was amazed at his teaching. He taught with authority and not like the teachers of the law of Moses. Jesus teaches in a style and with a content that shook the status quo. Now, simply deviating from the status quo, status quo is challenging and will raise opposition. No matter how good or important change is, or will prove to be later, something of the old must yield to make room for the new. Always. The bin for recycling took the space of a car. Somebody lost a spot on Sunday morning guaranteed but the bin went in now challenging the status quo is not confrontation challenge is simply 
moving against an existing force. And it's not malicious. And it is not adversarial. A boat does not have an adversarial relationship with water. But its hull displaces water that was once in its place. Leadership challenges the opposed. Suddenly a man with an evil spirit in him entered the meeting place and yelled, Jesus from Nazareth, what do you want with us? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. You are God's Holy One. Jesus told the evil spirit, Be quiet and come out of the man. The spirit shook him. Then it gave a loud shout and left. Now sometimes opposing forces are adversarial. Sometimes opposing forces are a reflection of a person's or institution's desire to maintain power and control with no regard for the merits of the issue at hand. I, or we, want this position of authority or power. I, or we, decide regardless of the merits of the proposal in itself, we will decide on the basis of how it will preserve or advance our power and control. The well-being of the man was of no concern to the evil spirit. It never is. Maintaining power over the man and people in his circle was the only issue. Jesus confronts this. Now questions can be answered. Challenges can be met. But oppressive voices are only about power and can only be called out. Leadership confronts the oppressor. <coughs> Now this congregation and the people in it have a wonderful and important reputation in Smith's Falls. Trinity leads. Trinity dares. Trinity has been known to and will again challenge the status quo both externally and internally. And this is always exciting. This always creates a buzz. This is always interesting. Now, no matter the ministry, no matter the issue, we are called to lead. Smith Falls and the world are hungry for a liberating, inclusive, progressive gospel. Smith Falls and the world need faithful people to live and act in such a way that sets people free. Trinity gathers the willing. Trinity is charged to encourage the uncertain. Trinity is called to challenge the oppressed. And all of us are called to confront the oppressor. Let's bow together in prayer. Our Lord and our God, we ask very simply this morning that you would cause us as individuals, that you would cause us collectively as a congregation to accept the mantle of leadership in fulfilling our ministry within the walls of this church, within the bounds of Smith's Falls, even onto the ends of the earth. The mantle of leadership that includes gathering the willing. The mantle of leadership that includes encouraging the uncertain. The mantle of leadership 
that includes challenging opposition and the mantle of leadership that calls us to confront the oppressor. Cause us to be faithful. Cause us to be courageous. Cause us to be wise. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.